partnership with Softer. So, so uh, what we are going to expect today is uh, we're going to listen to the participants who actually created their uh, tools or products that, uh, uh, which in they use uh, software as a tool in creating that. No, So this is also uh, somewhat letting you guys know, especially th those who are new to no code, how we can use no code to create products in general. So, but before that, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Crystal to uh, have a quick intro of uh, what no code PH is. So, Crystal. Hi, good evening, everyone. So, thank you for being here. So, just wanted to um, quickly show um, and introduce no code PH. So, um, we're uh, no code PH and um, sorry, mali pala yung mali pala yung buksan ko. But yeah, so just a short intro to the org. What problem are we trying to solve? The problem is that technology depends on code and only 0.3% of the world's entire population can code. And we believe because of this, there's a limit to progress and innovation in the use of technology. What's our solution? Our solution is to educate Filipinos about no code and, and let them know what no code and low code are, help them understand the importance and value of no code and low code. Then we want to equip Filipinos. So we want to teach Filipinos no code and low code skills and how to use no code and low code to their advantage. So for example, the workshop during this challenge. And we want to enable Filipinos, support Filipinos in their no code and low code efforts and endeavors. For example, challenges. And we want to support people in creating no code projects. So no code PH is a duly registered Don Stock Nonprofit Corporation. And uh, we are a community driven organization. We all come from different backgrounds, but we all share the common passion for no code. No code. And our mission is to empower Filipinos to become citizen developers. We aim to educate and inspire a nationwide community of learners, professionals, and entrepreneurs that embraces creativity, innovation, and service. So citizen developers are essentially anyone, regardless of their technical background, can be a developer. That's what we mean by citizen developers. And again, going back to community, we want to have a we want to educate and inspire nationwide community and our target is the learners, professionals, entrepreneurs, basically uh, most people to embrace creativity, innovation, and service. And our vision is for every Filipino to have the opportunity to thrive in a rapidly changing digital environment. So through the use of no-code platforms and technologies. Our values are, of course, integrity, inclusiveness, innovation, and impact. So by the numbers, now what's our impact so far? So right now, that's not updated because we have we have about less, more than one thousand members now. We've had our, we're having our third challenge right now. We have more than eight workshops already, and obviously this is not also updated because we had um no code projects made by challenge number three participants, so this is no longer updated. And then we had ha we have participated in Philippine Startup Week twice already, and we have had one in-person event. So I invite you to be part of the movement. Thank you. All right, thanks for that, Crystal. So just resharing my screen. All right, so before we get started, so uh, just a quick question, guys. What do you think about no code? So I know uh, you already have you have created your products and applications uh, in no code, especially my participants. So what about the others or even participants or judges? If you want to share your thoughts about no code. Okay, fun Legos. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, Terrell said. My coding pa rin pag no code. Kinda. <laughs> so it's very con convenient and powerful, innovative. It's so it's so easy that that makes it amazing. Mm, okay. 
Nice. It's simple. All right. Uh, anyone else? All right. So yeah, uh, we're gonna talk about that later uh, while the judges are deliberating. No. So uh, any no code stuff. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Moving on. So like uh, our first uh, session, which is the launch day, like almost a week ago, we're gonna have um, merch, free merch, but uh, there would be three questions later. Uh, and you have to listen to the actual demos because the questions towards the end will be about those. So whoever answers the questions correctly and kung sino mauna, so they would get uh, no code page shirts. So just the shirt, hindi kasama yung ibang, ano, hindi kasama yung ibang items sa picture. <laughs> oh, sayang, pati sana ako, sasagot ako eh. Kaso, ayun. All right. And then, okay, uh, just a quick uh, recap of the ground rules. So, uh, you should be all kind and respectful to everyone, especially uh, when they're presenting. So, make sure that our uh, mics are muted. It's okay if you want to open your cameras later. That's okay. But especially the audio. So, please make sure that uh, we give the floor to whomever is going to present later. And then next one would be engage uh, by commenting and asking questions in the chat, in the chat box. So uh, the great thing about virtual meetings is you can always uh, ask your questions while not really interrupting wh whoever is speaking. So I'm not sure though if uh, <laughs> we're going to welcome any uh, questions while the presenter are presenting uh, what uh, what do you think crystal um judges lang yung mag clarifying questions all right yep all right and then of course lastly uh, we are here to have fun and hopefully uh, not just fun but also learn so our tonight's agenda or the flow of the event would be uh, split into four parts. So first one would be uh, the demos or the presentation. Uh, these are first five. I believe we have how many, Crystal? Seven or eight? Nine. Nine, nine okay. <laughs> so we're going to have the five uh, presenters first, then a quick break, and then uh, the next four afterwards. And I think it's not yet here. But after the, the demo, there would be a deliberation by the judges, which uh, I'm not uh, yet sure how long it would take, but probably uh, we're going to give them as long as it takes to uh, judge fairly then. But while they're doing that, we're going to do some activities uh, yung mga may iwan na hindi judge. So while we're waiting on uh, their decision, we're going to do some... Uh, hopefully fun activities later and some networking then. And then lastly, we're going to announce the winners and also uh, give away the merch to wh whoever can answer uh, the questions later. So, all right. So uh, we have a quote here from Daniel. I don't know how to pronounce his surname, but okay, Daniel. So we don't want to hear it, but one of the biggest secrets to success is the ability to take action. So this is one of the biggest value proposition of uh, no code is to take action quickly because in, uh, it's no code. It actually helps you kind of cheat a little bit in the, uh, what do you call this? A learning curve of uh, creating software and products. And so after that, we're going to talk about the judging criteria. So we only have three uh, very general uh, criteria, which is problem solving. Does the project, uh, project's problem exist? Does it 
actually solve the problem. Then the second one, ingenuity is the project even part of, even just a part of it or creative or unique. Yeah. And then the next one, execution and design. So how well it's designed, is it user friendly, etc. So these are very general rules, no? Pero, but then I would probably focus on the first one personally. So if your problem actually exists, if you if you can actually solve the problem, and if you're solving the problem for a majority of people or like a good chunk of people to be, of course, suitable. All right, so. Uh, so these are the uh, participants for today. So we're just gonna do a quick rundown. So for the first one would be Rumi Hub by Flory Dane. Then second one is What to Eat by Aga. And third one, PSU Tag by Roseth. And Warehouse PH by John. Wise Grocer by Clarence. Foodie by Andrew Dormi by G Gaius. Oh, no. Okay. I don't know if I mentioned his name. Sorry about that. And uh, for the eighth one, Word to Listing app uh, by uh, Jether. Peace of Body by Andre. So those are all the nine uh, participants that we're going to uh, listen to today. And we're going to uh, see towards the end who are the top three. And with that said, I'm going to present you the uh, panel of judges. So which of them are all my friends? <laughs> so I uh, actually recruited them. All, so ayun. So let's start with uh, Rad. So probably just uh, if you can give a quick one-liner introduction to yourself. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Rad. Um, I've been doing citizen development for the last 15 years and uh, currently doing AI and design innovation for IBM. And, uh, nice. Thanks, Rad. And next, Rad, will be uh, Teril. Hello. Uh, I'm Teril C. Um, I'm currently commercial director at Mayan. So it's a farm-to-table startup. So we bring um, uh, the products from smallholder farmers to markets in Metro Manila. Um, I'm a software engineer. and I'm not into sales. <laughs> so I'm not a grad dito. Yan na. Ayun, thanks, Daryl. And lastly, uh, it would be Abel. Hi, everyone. I'm Abel. I'm a product designer and facilitator from Tenet Relative Design. So I help clients build digital products like apps, mobile apps, websites. Thanks. Ayun. Thank you, judges. So we're going to hear from the judges later while uh, you guys do your presentation. And yeah. Uh, Crystal, do we do the demo now? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's no slide for it. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, interestingly, we would be uh, getting a crowd favorite later. So, I'm going to figure out how we can do the voting, but probably not in the chat box. I'll. Uh, we're going to have a board later, and I'm just going to lay out uh, like all the participants and their apps later and then we're going to do the voting there all right so with that said let's crack on to our first uh presentation by flory dame and uh her application is roomy hub so flory dame the floor is yours yes thank you okay good evening everyone before i present my app i would like to share a story. When I started this challenge, I was in the middle of finding a place to stay for my first year in medical school. At first, I looked at Google Maps. I figured if I kept zooming in and out of Google Maps, perhaps I'd be able to find some accommodation for me. 
But this was difficult, and it was frustrating to keep searching via Google Maps. And I wasn't even sure if there were any vacant rooms out there. Later on, a schoolmate of mine sent me a list of accommodations on Google Sheets. She asked, how did you look for a place to stay? I was looking at Facebook groups looking for roommates. I said, I was just zooming in and out of Google Maps, lol. She sent me a Google Sheets of people who were looking for roommates and lodging. When I saw that Google Sheets, an idea came to mind. I was thinking, if there's a spreadsheet, there's an app for that. Coincidentally, I was thinking of an app for this challenge. And that's how this idea came to be. Lo and behold, I thought that if there are a more organized way for people to look for roommates and places to stay instead of just Facebook groups, perhaps it would be easier for us. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Roomy Hub. So what is Roomy Hub? Roomy Hub is a website made of software that IO, which seeks to help Filipinos find roommates and places to rent more easily. It can be seen as an alternative to the usual way Filipinos try to find places to stay, which are usually social media platforms. It can be hard to look for a place where it has already been buried under several posts or messages. Although websites such as Lamudi and Astoria exist to help people buy and sell property, the focus of this website is more about helping people find places to rent based on how many roommates they want, the location of the place, monthly rent price, and ratings. Students and the working population who are looking for a temporary place to stay are the main target demographic of this platform. So let's take a look at some screenshots. When you first enter the website, you see this. When you click on the Explore Places button, you get to the screen where you see the places that are available as of now. These are the only places available, but in the future, people can also add their own places. They can also search using the search bar by a name or location. They can filter by monthly rent or rating. As of now, I haven't made it work yet, but I can make it work in the future. And then when you do click on a place, it leads you to the screen and you can see the image of the place, the rating, and also the description. There's a contact us button. You can also put your email down below so you can learn more about the place. And when you do click on the contact us button, it leads you to a social media platform where you can contact your roommates. So that's it. Thank you for listening. If you want to visit the website, here's a link to the website. I'll also send you a video of the website if you want to check that out. And I can also show a demo of that. Can everyone see it? Yep. So that's it. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we're gonna na uh, we're now gonna have our judges ask some questions. So, yep, judges, uh, whenever you're ready. I have a question, Lord Dave. <clears throat> so I, I've checked Lamudi and Astoria uh, quickly. Uh, when you mentioned that there are existing um, applications for that. So I found it easier for me to use Nestoria because there's an input um, box in there and an option to search for, let's say I'm looking for a place in Manila, either it's for rent or if it's for sale. Um, so if I was unaware of the options, how would Rumi Hub be something that would stand out out of all uh, the existing options that's available right now? Well, Roomy Hub is more catered to people who are looking for temporary lodging, unlike Nestoria, Lamudi. Like, we've also used these places. Me and my dad have used this, and 
uh, in our experience, it's mostly about people talking to the agents and the agents giving them a price for you to actually buy it. And it's more about buying and selling property instead of like just students who just want a place to rent and just want to find roommates. So this is more for like a more organized way of connecting people with their roommates so they can find a temporary place to stay. Like they're not really going to buy it like in Lumidi or in Astoria. Also, I appreciate the fact that this links to, let's say, Viber, or if this is something that you could link to social media, because students are social media savvy, right? So yes. if you could uh, link this to, to like certain apps that your target market is using, uh, definitely uh, this would boom. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask, uh, with regard to when you mentioned <clears throat> a spreadsheet linked to to the app, do users need to go into the spreadsheet to update, let's say, information? If I was, let's say, um, someone who is renting a place, how would I use your app? No, actually, uh, my, my idea back then was that I do want to improve the website by adding a sign-in option. As of now, I still haven't exactly learned everything about software, but in the future, I want to have a sign-in option where people can answer a form and they can put in like how many roommates they want, what kind of place they're setting up for rent, how many uh, ratings they have in that place. So uh, there's going to be a form for that once the website is more set up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, hope I can go next. Uh, first, um, I was very happy with the presentation, so thank you. Um, I'm not sure if you realize this, but like what you just presented now could actually pass for like seed round funding or pre-seed round funding because it completes like the whole story and you were able to um, articulate very well what was the problem and what was the solution. Um, and you can get it out really fast. No? You don't need a lot of coding involved. Um, I guess my biggest question is how do you plan to monetize this? Like I, I didn't see a way for Rumi Hub to earn. Yeah, basically my idea of monetizing it in the future is that perhaps we can also talk to the owners of the condominiums or the dormitories and we can work with them to find a way so that we can support each other because I am not only supporting the people who are looking for roommates, I'm also supporting the owners of the condominiums, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you might want to take a page out of like how Lamudi does it. So uh, Lamudi takes, um, they don't take a commission. They basically ask for payment um, for registering as a broker in their, uh, in their application. That's how they make money. And it's a monthly fee. Um, you might want to explore that kind of model. Thank you. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So, okay. Are we good, judges? All right. So, for the next one, uh, I think Aga is not yet here. So, we're going to go with uh, Rosette with uh, PSU tag. Uh, Rosset, Rosset, you can now share your screen. Yes, sir. Um, good evening, everybody. We are from Syntax. I will be your presenter, Rosset Dare, tonight. First, have you ever opened a social media app with just the intention of looking if there are any updates from your school or workplace, only to get distracted by unrelated posts from what you were looking for? Not even knowing that an hour has passed and you find yourself scrolling through reels and for forgetting what your original objective was. Pagasinan State University, Te Anong Ganap, or PSU Tag, is an information site strictly for PSU for PC unions. The purpose of this app is to avoid distraction from ads and other posts unrelated to your school or workplace. 
It filters out unnecessary information and provides the latest news and updates to peace unions. It sim okay. it simplistic design makes it easier to know exactly what you're you looking for. All posts and information are taken from their official FB posts. When clicking on a specific article, it will direct you to their corresponding original post. Similar to this, when you go to groups, you can find all the campus depart, campus organizations. And when you click it, it will lead you to their original FB page, similar to the, the departments and offices. The latest at campus announcement will also be updated regularly. For the future. Uh, we plan to update the site to allow specific user groups to post their own information. Limited users will only be allowed to maintain the, to maintain the objective of the app, and that is to prevent the overflow of information and only maintaining the important the in, important posts. That is all. Thank you. All right, judges. Hello. Yep. Right, so, um, great presentation. But is it possible to for you to show us again the, um the home page or some of the pages? Yes, sir. Wait. Okay, just my, my question would be, what separates this app from your university's um, website? What would you say is the difference? Um, mostly from the university site, there's not really much update from it. This is like a daily based update where we get um, the latest posts from the other organizations and transfer it to this site. Oh, is so it, it's is like a feeds app, right? Sorry, sorry. Right. Set up. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So it's like a feeds uh, app, right? So like you just aggregate, um, uh, I guess, posts from different sources. Is, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I see. Sorry, Red. How, how are you planning to? to feed in the information now into the website like how does it how do you actually do it in the back end i'm sorry may you repeat the question how will you get information from the different sources into that website or into the app um we're looking to update the app so uh, limited user groups can post their own um, information. For example, like the admins in Facebook pages, like that. Okay, so you have other users access it. The idea is there are like levels of the user groups. There are only like a limited number of users that can update it while the other users are only able to see the information and not have any access in managing it. 
Okay. Thanks, Rasek. So Rasek, I have just a quick question and some comments. Um, so like Abel said, no, uh, it's more like a student portal or a school portal that's linked to social media, which is good uh, because it, it's up to date versus let's say you webmaster in a school, maybe having some, some time or difficulties in updating. Uh, it would be great also if you could introduce, let's say, certain features that would uh, entice the users, the mga students. No? So if there's an ease of use case, they, there's a chat box feature. If I want to get some updates, can I ask what's the updates for the next two weeks? And it would feed me the information from social media. So, so that would be very helpful if I was a very busy student, lalo, let's say midterms. Okay, na yung midterms, kailan yung bayaran. Um, am I up to date? So mga ganong bagay. Because I could see it in social media if I have the time. Pero some of the more important things that you could only access, let's say, sa bulletin board uh, across the hallway, if you could feed that into the website or the portal, and it would feed into Facebook or other social media, that would be great also. So merong feedback loop na mangyayari between your, yourself, the students, also the webmaster or, or the school or the org. And you, you could have it sponsored by your school, let's say by the time that you guys graduate. I'm not sure if you're already, or if you're still enrolled, no? but <clears throat> would be great. So, so I, I find this from a student uh, life cycle management perspective, it's very good. And uh, thank you. All right, thanks for that, Rad. All right, and again, thanks for uh, the presentation, Rosette and team. Sorry, I forgot the other team member's name. All right, then we're gonna move on to the next one, which is Warehouse PH uh, by John. So John, whenever you're ready, you can share your screen now. All right, can you see my screen? Um, can you can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. So so my name is Jan. I'm an um, uh, experienced uh, product founder, and I've, I've built a couple of other products. So I'm very excited to share this new project I have, which is called Warehouse PH. So at Warehouse PH, the problem um, I'm trying to solve is uh, to help um, businesses find warehouse space. Uh, right now, if you if you're in a business in retail or distribution. Um, there is a lot of demand for warehouse space. It's being driven by the growing middle class, increasing consumption, e-commerce, and so as the as you know as, as the time progresses, uh, it's becoming more and more of a problem. If you're a property owner, uh, it's very inefficient. It's very hard now to to list space, to find buyers, to find renters, to find lessers. So essentially, what we're trying to do is is to solve that problem by building a managed marketplace. So so why is it a managed marketplace? So we're, it's not just a, like a classified ads or a listing site, but it, we, we actually provide value added services. So we, besides matching uh, property owners with potential buyers or lessers or renters, we also, we also plan to facilitate inquiries, uh, payments, lead generation, uh, or customer acquisition and other services. Um, so the market size for this is very huge. Uh, the logistics market is a $22 billion market for the Philippines. If we look at you know, 1%, it's already a huge market, $220 million. And so how it works and how we plan to address this market is very simple. It's just four steps. Maybe best illustrated if I do a demo. So if I sign up to the, to the site, I can, um, I can register and I can identify myself as either a customer or an owner. So if I'm a customer, I can um, view the listings. And of course, I can filter the listings uh, you know, by type or by certain attributes, like is it cold storage, um, ambient temperature. So very vertical specific uh, parameters. Uh, like that. And then we can also geocode the address. We can show it in a map so people can find it. And then they can inquire. So they can immediately inquire with the property owner if they want to buy or, or rent the property. And you can view previous inquiries. Now, if I'm an owner, I identify myself as an owner. So I, so here I'm changing my profile as an owner. I can uh, post, of course, a listing. I can view my listings. I can manage my listings, update it, and, and so on. And then I can view my in the inquiries that have come in. So I can contact the, the person. I can reply. I can send an SMS and, and email uh, dynamically from the system. And of course, I can post additional ads. 
Um, so uh, how are we different? We're different from other property listing companies because they're very general. They try to cater to everything from dorms to housing to condos and everything else. We're specifically focused on warehousing. So people who are in this industry can find a specific warehouse they need. Uh, you know, cold storage, pick pack and shipping, wrap space, you know, very, very you know, industry specific uh, requirements. Um, if we, so just a quick on a uh, bit on the progress, we built this in one week since Friday, learned software over the weekend and built the functionality over the past week. Um, and uh, tech stack very quickly. So back end is Airtable built on software, Zapier to build the integration specifically with services like Google Maps to do the geocoding to get the latitude and longitude and Zoho forms to populate the data. So just um, a little bit of custom code to make some of the stuff dynamic, as you saw the inquiries and uh, the profiling. So things change based on the profile of the user. So a little bit of custom code there uh, was needed. Roadmap, we, as I mentioned, we plan to uh, add value added services like payments facilitation and other you know, virtual tours and other services where we can monetize further. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, thank you very much. Happy to take any questions. And Chan, thanks for sharing. I've known you for a while, so I'm, I'm not surprised with uh, the quality of, of this one. Well, I have a question though. Um, if I was looking at like the top 10, um, warehouse management apps, why would I choose this one? Well, um, if we look at, um, so it's not really a warehouse management system, it's a marketplace. Okay. Um, I haven't, I don't, when I did some research a little bit, um, so this mostly managed either by the, you know, the generic like Lamudi, Property24, these kinds of marketplaces, or they go to Facebook groups, or they go through brokers. So, you know, professional brokers, so I, I think all of those channels are very inefficient. And I think there's space for a service like Warehouse Page. Thank you. I'm satisfied with your answer. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, John. Gagawin so, niyo ba talaga to? As in, as in legit, gagawin niyo ba to? Gusto ko. Kung may kasama ako. <laughs> Parang pet project na. Pero kung merong interested here to join... Tapos walang bayad. <laughs> Kasi wala akong pera. Happy to do it. Ayan, si Mitch daw. Contactin mo na daw sa si setting pin. <laughs> but, but yeah, in, in all seriousness, um, uh, our business, yung agribusiness, can really use this. So, um, we were trying to get um, produce kasi from so smallholder farmers from all over Manila. And it's not always efficient to chip it all into our hub in Green Hills. Kasi one, wala kaming space. Pangalawa, masisira yun pagdating sa Metro Manila because it would come from Batanes, right? So this would really help us out. On the other side naman, um, my family naman is into a lot of real estate. Um, so we do have warehouses that we, we, have, we, we have to rent out <laughs> kasi natutulog lang. Um, and the best way we can find customers really is through uh, brokers then and through yung mga kilala namin through the Chinese community. No? So it, it's actually hard to find uh, good customers on, on the property owner side. On the, um, <laughs> on the renter side, it's also hard to find um, warehouses that fit your criteria. For example, yung sinabi mo, cold storage. Um, kailangan kailangan namin yun, but like very few warehouses that we know have that um, and even fewer fit our price point. So like, if you can get this live, I'll be your first customer, bro. <laughs> All right. Invest na, invest na. <laughs> Say, but absolutely. Yan lang. Sige, wala ang tanong. Tuwa lang ako. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right, uh, I think we're good. Thanks for that, uh, John. All right, so uh, this will be our uh, last presenter before we go on a break. So I'm uh, going to hand it over to Clarence, uh, which, uh, what, what's it, the app? Okay, Rice, Gro Rice Grocer. Nice. So take it away, Clarence. All right. Uh can I be heard? Okay, naman yun. Yep. All right. 
So good evening, everyone. I'm Clarence Po, and I built Wise Grocer, your next gen grocery assistant. All right. So have you ever experienced going to a grocery store and finding out prices are not what it used to be? Especially nowadays with the rising inflation, every time we go to the grocery, the prices just give us a mini heart attack, right? Or perhaps experience that frustration, knowing that the prices at another store were cheaper. If it's something, uh, no, that if you're already inside the grocery store, you have no choice. You won't want to waste time going back to that other store. Or maybe you're almost done buying the things that you need, but there's this one item or two that the shop isn't carrying. Would you visit another store to go look for it? Uh, I mean, if it's important, right? Or if it's not that important, would you just postpone buying it until your next grocery trip? So all of this is a waste of your money and your more precious time. So here comes Wise Grocer. So with Wise Grocer, you can compare prices at a glance, okay? And then you can also check the availability of your favorite items. And you can estimate your total spending at each grocery store. And most importantly, it will save you both time and money. Let me show you how Wise Grocer works. Starting with the Wise Grocer homepage, which contains a brief description of our app, users can proceed to log in, which will take them to the main page, which contains a list of products. Let's take a look at Absolute Distilled Water 8 liters. Here we can see the prices from five different grocery stores. Wow, what is? Let's click Add to Cart, or you can click on the product itself. This will take us to the product page, which contains more information such as category, rating, and manufacturer or distributor. We see that Shopee and Lazada do not carry this product, and that makes sense because it is a bulky, heavy product, and it would not make sense to be sent by a career. For the remaining three stores, though, Ever has the cheapest price. Wow, what is? I'll take two of those and add to cart. We also have the main filter on the top portion. Let's say we are looking for dairy products. Let's click on it. We can further narrow down the results by using the secondary filter on the left. Let's say we are looking for 10 dairy products. There you go. I want some Alpine milk. I can easily see that Pandemart does not carry this product. I'll take three of these. If you're looking for a specific product, we also have a search bar handy. Just type in some keywords, which correspond to the product that you're looking for. Australia, and there you go, Australia Harvest Cooking Oats. I'll take two of them. Now, of course, it will be difficult to remember all of these details, and that's where Wise Grocer comes in. Click on the card and you can see your grocery list together with a quick comparison of their prices. At the bottom, we have totals table, and the total for Shopee, Lazada, and Pandemart is lower since they do not carry all of the products in our list. But for Pure Gold and Ever, we can see that overall, Pure Gold is cheaper, and that's where we're heading tomorrow. Wow, what is? Finally, we have the availability table for Shopee, Lazada, and Pandemart. They carry only two of the three products in our cart. That's just 66.7%. Ever in Pure Gold has all of the items, 100%. That will save us a lot of time. Now that's wise. Right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so, so what are you waiting for? Save time and money on your grocery trips. Sign up today. Now that's wise. Thank you very much. All right, thanks for that, Clarence. So I'm going to hand it over to the judges. Love the presentation, Clarence. <laughs> Good job. But uh, the products are really cool, right? But I wanted to ask how you monetize this. Yeah, we can monetize this by putting ads or related products. So if, for example, you know, Unilever or PNG would like to place their product, and on the side or you know if you are adding something to cart then you we might place a section where related products or things you might you know you know like sa amazon no? uh, things that people usually buy together no? and then we can put you know we can bump up their products mm -hmm. Is there is there uh the possibility of uh being able to buy 
within the website. So Can you see both the button? Not sure about that. Uh, actually, I'm new to this <laughs> new no code scheme, so uh, we'll look into that. No, I think it's something we should look into. Yeah, thanks, Clarence. Thank you so much. So, Clarence, thank you for sharing. So, I have some questions. No. So, number one, I, I worked with a partner before, so a couple of years back for iPrice. And this, this is across Asia, so six countries. And it's the same, but yours is specific to groceries, which is very, very, very helpful no? for, for people in the middle class sector, uh, for people, because everyone has access to the internet now. And it's easier for people to, to search for options. So a couple of questions that I have. Uh, how how does this uh, get updated real time in terms of pricing? I'm sorry, uh, updated. Yes. Um, I might be using a web crawler. Now I'm I'm thinking of using a web crawler to scrape the prices from. Uh, on I mean most of the shops already have their prices online na rin naman. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe something like that. But for now, it's just hard coded. But yeah, in the future, we'll definitely look at that. Okay, because that's one of the problems that we had before, no? For iPrice, the prices online is not updated. Right. Uh, the prices per branch is different. So if I go to Laguna and I go to Cubao, both pure gold um products for a specific brand of corned beef, magkaiba yung presyo. Mm -hmm. It may be piso yung difference. It could be one seventy five, pero that that small amount helps a lot sa middle class specifically right now. No, so if your use case is we're in a pandemic or pre post pandemic situation, and I'm looking for options to stretch my budget, how can I get? Uh, let's say I have three pure golds in my area. Ano hindi to yung pinahamura? Which one has like sale on let's say pasta? or sale on certain types of groceries, tissues, or what have you. So that's going to be very helpful. Yun yung hindi pa nagagawa ni iPrice. So if, if this is something that, let's say, new retail store, they update this in a spreadsheet, and that gets linked to your uh, software, that's going to be very helpful. It's easy. Kasi meron naman na silang uh, portal na ganun. And then you can tag it by PSU. Um, so madali lang siya. And then... How does this incentivize retail partners? So, kung kunwari, ako si Pure Gold, I would love to to partner, let's say, 10 branches of Pure Gold with you. So, how would you get me to partner all of my branches with you? So, that's another use case that you should um, uh, look for. Kasi you could compare it and mas marami yung user base na ma, ma uh, e entice mo. Kasi mas marami yung coverage. No? And then, lastly, how would you maintain this? As in maintaining the hard coded that, that you mentioned, no? um, yeah. it's gonna be very tedious and tough. Suicide, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, temporary lang naman po yan. So as I uh -huh. mentioned earlier, uh, maybe we can build some web scrapers or mm -hmm. perhaps uh, yun nga, maybe partnership. Yung na mention yung kanina regarding sa uh, incentivizing, mm -hmm. we can uh, ask these uh, as these partners no, na meron tayong direct API na parang we send them, once they add to cart, diretso na, hindi na nila kailangan ano doon. They can, when they check out and then they chose now ever or pure gold, directo na yun masasend kay pure gold. Yun na, close na yung order. So hindi na nila kailangan umali. And yes. then if they want to provide promo codes, right? So that's going to be more competitive then. So, mm -hmm. yon. So congratulations. I find this a very strong uh, statement that, that you shared. Thank so you so thank you. Nice. All right. So as promised, uh, we're going to have a quick five-minute break. Uh, I'm just going to show a quick timer here on my screen so you can uh, do your bio break or uh, if you haven't presented it yet, uh, presented yet, uh, you can uh, 
revise your presentation if you want. So let me. All right. So uh, let's have it. Uh, let's meet at 9 p.m. So we're gonna have it seven minutes. Para ayun para mas uh, madaling tandaan. 9 p.m. Uh, everyone. So ayun. Uh, we're still. I mean, I, I'm. Uh, we're still be here in Zoom. So if you have any questions, please uh, let us know in the chat box and we'll get back to that later. All right. Thanks, guys. See you in a bit.
All right, so we're just gonna wait uh, to people for people to come in. So our next uh, presenter would be uh, Aga, which, oh yeah, what to eat. Uh, yeah, Aga, uh, please get ready with your presentation. All right, I think we can start now. Uh, Aga, you're ready. Uh, hello, Aga, you there? I mean, we can see you <laughs> in the in the Zoom meeting. Um, nag PM siya na yung internet niya daw medyo hindi ano. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, right. So we can uh, proceed na lang with the next one, right? Sige. Balikan natin si Aga later. So the next one would be Foodie by Andrew. Uh, Andrew, are you ready? Hello, can you hear me? Yep. All right, can I start now? Yep, sure. All right, so hi, I'm Andrew, CEO and founder of Foodie, an application for food enthusiasts to satisfy their cravings. Post-pandemic, we have seen a lot of people going out a lot more. People are more willing to be more adventurous, try different stuff, and increase socialization overall. The market that you want to, um, to enter is the food service market with valued at $10.37 billion with an expected growth rate of 7.83 driven by consumers who are willing to try new restaurants with a wide range of menu options. Meet Joshua Sanchez, a project manager, millennial, and food enthusiast. His usual pain points would be, I'm hungry, where should I eat? Or what are the good spots to eat right now? Finding where to eat becomes a hassle for Joshua because information is scattered, messy, and hard to remember. This ruins the exploration experience that customers are looking forward when trying to satisfy one's craving. Joshua and a lot more others are indecisive, they spend so much time finding where to eat while ultimately leading to nowhere or settling for fast food restaurants. Why? A couple of reasons. Social pressure, scattered information, and seeing too many options. On the flip side, meet Mary Joy Vergara, a small restaurant owner, but has usual concerns such as creating a better exposure to her business and thinks about reaching to more customers aside from friends and family. Ultimately, the question what you want to ask is how might we improve the experience for customers for food exploration while giving small-time restaurants avenues for exposure. This is where Foodie comes to play. We built our MVP entirely through software and Airtable. This helps us create better insights and creating a better and meaningful experience for users. In Foodie, we aim to create an exceptional food experience. First, you sign up. Then you search for your cravings. May it be food, cuisines, restaurants, or anywhere you might think related to food to really match the cravings that you want. Pressing the restaurant that you wish to order will lead to their website our Facebook pages where you can order the foods or inquire the specific foods you want to buy from the specific restaurants. But that's not all. Um, you're also given to foodie socials to validate those cravings by user-generated gener content, reviews, and thoughts. One thing we found from our user research is that people are indecisive because they are scared and aren't validated by the choices they make. The more we expose people to, to a social and fun experience of food exploration, then they are able to justify those choices and more likely to explore and take those cravings to life. In terms of our competition, uh, we position ourselves as a restaurant ag aggregator slash sociable food app, creating a fun and unique experience for users. For revenue model, we uh, cater to four types of uh, revenue sources, maybe through premium memberships for users, advertisements throughout the app, commission and vouchers, orders placed throughout the app, and merchant paid features, which are additional features for an added fee which includes customer data, data analytics and insights for restaurants to be able to improve their menu, improve their marketing strategies, and all. 
For our go-to-market strategy for foodie, we would utilize a push and pull strategy. For a push strategy, it would be strategic partnerships with restaurants and also um, collaborating with food influencers to create awareness on the app. For our pull strategy, we would cater to vouchers, which, would in, which, which also includes a lot of social media campaigns, a hiker version website, and social um, and SEO marketing. So that would be for my presentation. This has been Foodie. I'm Andrew. Thank you for listening, and I'm willing to answer your questions. Thank you. Hey, Andrew. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, so I love your presentation. I love the use of um, the, the tactics and the strategies in, in doing your, your research. No? Uh, so I have a question. So number one, how would you position your product in the product led growth? Because I see product market fit is there, yes. But how would this be product led growth driven? If I was, let's say, your target customer, uh, Persona X, my demographic is this one, right? So how would product led growth come into the picture? To achieve product led growth, I think the main thing for Foodie to be able to succeed is our goal is to really increase the amount of users using the app. Mm -hmm. When there are a lot of users utilizing the app, the more business can see the value out of why we should apply a restaurant for foodie. So I think the answer over there would be create a lot of stickiness through the app. Okay. So I guess rewarding a lot of users through posting and really creating user-generated content through the app, rewarding them through gamification will, um, will really apply um, some product-like growth, both for users and also for restaurants, yeah. So, so word of mouth is also a, a huge factor since so the product. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then next would be, you had your numbers. I, I love the numbers that you presented. But in terms of uh, partners, let's say the restaurants that you'd be partnering with or would be um, uh, getting the incentives out of your app. So do you have the numbers you estimate, let's say, in, in my growth for the next uh, two quarters, this is the numbers that we are um, projecting. Um, I haven't dealt with the numbers itself, but project. Uh, hopefully our goal would be to increase awareness and increase order numbers by um, 20 to 30%. Yeah. Okay, that, that's huge. No? 20 to 30 again. But I, I like that because there's the hunger for growth. Um, then lastly, from a UI perspective, I don't think blue sticks well for me for a food product. No? So it has, ko ako siguro mga yellow, red, ganyan. Kasi it, it, it aligns to when I'm hungry, this, this catches my attention. No? Versus this being colored blue, parang hindi ako masyadong gutom. Or if I'm hungry, this is like the last thing that I would click. Definitely. I think um, we can alter the UI to make it more um, representative of what um, food hunger actually looks like or what mm -hmm. it implies. Yeah. But overall, I, I love the, the product statements. I love how you did the MVPs. Um, I'm looking forward at the MMFs um, based on what you presented. No? So I, I'm, I'm going to look out for this app. So thank you. Definitely. Thank you for those comments. Appreciate it. Hey, Andrew. Uh, Hello. Oh, sorry. I think Abel wanted to go first. Go ahead, ladies first. I will. Gentleman. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, Andrew. Um, sorry, I, I didn't quite understand the customer journey because the problem you, you put forward earlier was like, um, we have a lot of information. So therefore, it's it, it sort of... Um, prevents us from making uh, the optimal choice, right, as to what we want to eat. So your application seems to be presenting also a lot of information. So like, how will I get to, I guess, the dish or the restaurant that I, I want to eat at at the end of the day? Yeah, um, that's a really good question and really thought about that. Um, to address, I currently, this is for our MVP, really want to find out what type of um, information presented would actually be considered somewhat of um, a good interface for users where they are not overloaded with information. 
to answer that question, we are, we are actually currently exploring a lot more um, AI technologies, especially with ChatGPT, which can um, provide suggestions depending on um, how the user wants it to be. So maybe a prompt would be like, I want to eat at Quezon City, preferably Korean chicken and something that is um, really famous. So I guess that those are the type of prompts that ultimately we want to um, to appear. So it's not just it's not just gonna be I want chicken. So it's gonna be more specific to what the user actually wants. So I guess a lot utilizing AI technology and utilizing um, language processing could be one way of really solving this problem. But ultimately, that's something we're currently working on. So thank you for this question and. I, and I really think it's going to be a big um, problem that we're going to solve ultimately with the development of our app. All right. Thanks. Uh, uh, Andrew, uh, I was going to ask if you could show us how it actually works because um, I have this uh, one all right. question. Was, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot, there are a lot of apps like this. Already, right? and I think that's what would separate. I think currently to test our MVP. So this is how would it looks like. Um, similar to a lot of apps, this is basically like our MVP product. Um, so if we write something Korean, then it would show like chicken and all of that. So, okay. So how, how would how would you say this is different from Zomato? Something like Zomato. Um. I think for Zomato, their market is really towards um, restaurants, diners, a lot, a bigger, wider market of restaurants. For foodie, we really want to focus on the more um, small time restaurant owners, a lot of um, locally made, low key restaurants. So I guess not really an interface alone, but more of the user, the target market, the target restaurants that they want to share. Um, this is in line with what we found out that users are more, um, they want to explore a lot more local restaurants and they're more willing to pay for these um, locally made restaurants and all. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think something that you could focus on is um, double downing on that experience. It seems like you have a great sense of where of how you want to serve the market or the users but um maybe i'd, I'd like personally i'd like to see more of that shown in the product because i think as of now the question that i would ask myself is should i use this or should i use zomato i think zomato is closed in the philippines recently they stopped their operations last um january so that's the reason why um, me and my group mates made, uh, decided to enter this type of um, industry. So, yeah. Actually, I think the um, user-generated content would be great for us because this, this would separate. Yeah, yeah I guess that's uh, like our value proposition in comparison to our competitors. Right. Actually, yeah, you're you. right. Like, if, if you can make a really good search engine, because like, if I'm eating out, I'm usually eating out with someone else. Okay, my husband. So like, say I, I want some group. He wants I don't know beer, whatever. So like, if we could have like a really good search engine, like what you said, utilizing ChatGPT, where um, I want somewhere with some group. I want somewhere with good beer. I don't want to spend too much. I want my price range to be around like uh, the, I don't know, three hundred per person, give or take. Um, I want it to be like. Uh, walking distance from where I am currently without actually inputting where I am like it knows like my GPS location um, basically something that does not make me think if your UI could yeah. be like simply like Google like it's just a search bar like I want I want blah and, it, and you give me search results um, um, I guess sorted according to um, what best best fits my search, and then that's where you can insert the uh, the customer testimonials. No, you you may you may start, and I think you can get that data set also from from Google. Definitely, I think yeah, that's that, the type of certain product that you want to um put out. So that that's the exact ideal type of in, um user experience that you want to for users to experience. So yeah, definitely we'll take those comments to consideration. Sure. If, 
Oh, to, I think to shorten it, it's more of something that's really personalized and really more intuitive than what current restaurant aggregators currently put out to the market. Mm -hmm. And if you could connect it to like the usual places I, I eat at, so like it remembers where I actually went, or like the places I, I got grabbed food from, I'm not sure if you can get that data. That would be also great so it can learn. Yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, thank you for that, Andrew. Uh, now we're going to move on to our next presenter, uh, Gaius for Dormi. Hope I didn't butcher her name. Uh, it's actually pronounced as Gaius, sir. Uh, good evening. Wait, let me share my screen first. So I hope you can see my screen right now. Let me just present it full screen. There. So yeah, so I'm Gius Kaski, a fab, uh, second year Bachelor of Science uh, in Computer Engineering at Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Manila. So my quick hobbies. So I love learning the technologies just like this one, Software, which is a noble platform. Uh, uh, studying as well, playing video games, and of course, singing. So for my app, oh wait, did he did he wait. get disconnected? Oh yeah, can you yes uh, share your screen again? Yes, sir. So can you see my screen again? All right, thank you. So, so Dormi is basically your place to share and pay. So you can look at the logo right here. It's Hasti, which is exactly for dorms, dormitories, and such. And it also has this, um, basically a door lock uh, at the middle, you know. So for the next one is, what is this about? What is Dormi about? So Dormi is basically about us students, you know, particularly those in the universities and colleges. So, as students, we don't have uh, that, that much actual time to handle um, stresses when it comes to financial management um, and all of that. So I think this app would greatly benefit that. So what is the main idea of the app? So first is actually a scheduling, scheduler. Combine that with a payment system uh, and then integrating that into a PWA or a progressive web app rather than uh, native apps, uh, which you actually need to download from the App Store and the Play Store. So also uh, my payment system is actually uh, customizable by the users or the students themselves. Thus, customization rocks. So the benefits and advantages of this um, app of mine is, actually there's nine advantages of digital payment systems in education, which can be cited. I put the source uh, below. So I just got or get the three most important things that students of the students like me actually uh, benefit from. So ensures the timely payment of fees. So we don't want to think about fees anymore. We just want this to be organized and scheduled. So the next one would be enables better reporting and tracking. So malalaman na namin, we're able to know kung ano ba yung mga pinagastos namin. For example, we have um, payments for rents, payments for personals, and such. The other one uh, is convenient. And it saves time. So time is really essential, especially for us students. We don't get much sleep and that all. So after that, after using the app, it will benefit the students uh, like me. And it is actually aligned to the SDG principle, which is quality education, which aims to mitigate or actually um, they call this, like deny all the stresses that uh, students get. and they just get the quality education that they deserve. So, um, quick reminder, this is still a prototype. I'm still working on the features of this, but yeah, you can see again, it's working. So it's a prototype. So additional features, so we plan, so I plan to monetize this using a subscription plan type of thing. So there's gonna be additional features and users would have to pay for that. And again, for the additional features, since this is just a prototype, I would be adding some features, for example, um, giving insights or information for other students about 
how to ha handle uh, financial stress and such. This other one uh, after the information would be um, for the subscription plans is an additional feature. So you could um, have mul multiple payment systems at once for your account. And then the next one would be um, creating a feature, for example, for landlady or landlord so that they could connect with the students as well so that they would know uh, when the payment is due for the students. So here's a quick demo. So I actually skipped the signing part, the sign up part, because you already know that. So here's the home page already for the login users. Basically, you can create your payment system. You can customize the name, purpose, and such. And then you will have this code, this unique code. You can create another if you want, but we don't want that. I'm gonna connect now, connect now, and it's connecting. So after it's connected, it's gonna be uh, directed to the system they have created. And going to the dashboard, we can actually see the system is a good day. We can search for it, you know, and then you could click on it and it will see, you will see it again and you will be able to pay there. And of course you can edit this well as you want if you ever the admin. This one would be for the forum. So we want this forum actually, because, you know, we wanna connect students really. And then the next one would be the subscription plans, the profile, and basically signing out. That's all, and thank you. All right, thanks for thanks for that, Gaius. I hope I, I got that right this time. Uh, all right, I'm gonna pass it over to the judges. Uh, if you have any questions, so I have a question. Couple actually. Uh... So I, I love your target market. I love your business case, so to speak. But right? how does this align to local laws? Let's say we are handing money, we are handing financial information. Data Privacy Act came to mind. When you said like, this is financial management for, for students. No? And then you have uh, several um, laws that align to sa rent. So was this considered like let's say if your landlord go wants me to pay uh, 15 days before my due, pero sa renting laws it's already it's only five days max. So would this system uh, prompt the the landlord na hey ba wait no? uh, So does this protect or does this only serve your users? Rad. So we're actually, I'm actually still working at the feature for landlords and landladies, and I don't really actually know how to be able to handle them when, for example, they have this certain law about um, the five-day maximum payment. So I think I will be able to integrate it. I'm going to take note of that if, if I'm in development with the feature of having landlords and landladies connect with other students. Thank you for that, sir. And then I. It would be great to see you with Ruby Hub. If you could partner with Ruby Hub, Penina, um, in KK Florida, you know, uh, if someone could find, let's say, a place to stay, and then your app, uh, in tandem with hers, uh, it could manage everything. So, on focus na lang the students is to study, right? So, everything is, is just one app. If you could simplify um, both apps into just like a unified and much more simple UI and UX. This would go places. I I I've I've seen like college people na hindi makahandle ng finances well, and they tend to like switch dormitories. Pero ang brunt of the the cost is in the parents or you know, the sponsors of the rent. So this this actually goes outside your target market, the students alone. Also, it would help ah uh, mga parents or those who are funding for for the rent. And yun nga, yun nang balikan mo lang yung uh, protection of the users. No? So, so an app is not only there to serve as a tool. So always remember that for everyone. No? You should also protect the users. Uh, so, so the app itself is, is not one way na pako martilio. No? So it, it should also educate, it should also protect, it should also serve well your users. And it would make the product grow itself. So it's any product-led growth that I was asking earlier. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for that, sir. 
Tsaka huwag kang kabahan. <laughs> okay lang yan. Hey, hey. Um, uh, nice presentation. So, actually, we were, we were talking amongst ourselves. Podcast streamer <laughs> with the voice. Um, could you explain um, what your application does in one sentence, Muna? Uh, connect with your dormies and go pay. Thank you. All right. Um, would you mind uh, giving us a, a slow walkthrough of the features of your application? Um, I'm sorry, I kind of got lost. Um, during the presentation because as to what the features were. Uh, would you mind refreshing me? Say it. Sorry. Uh, do, do I need to share a screen with the actual website or do, do I have to just say the features? I don't know. You can better if you share your screen just for the benefit sure. of uh, myself and everyone else. Yes, okay, is, we have time no matter. Yes, this is Mitch in Sweden. I'm just curious, is it possible that the land the dorm owner itself or the landlord is the market rather than the person or the tenant? Is it possible that the the super user is the landlord who says, Hey, use this app to be able to pay me? Or something like that. I, I didn't quite get it because I got lost. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, guys, you can uh, proceed now. Basically, you you would just um have to sign in. Then you would be pre presented uh to the homepage where you could create the system, the actual system itself. So we could. Provide your custom name, for example, let's like in dormy, and then select like your purpose is rent payments, be shared or individual. You could type in the schedule and then type a specified amount, type in GCash, G person, or whatever you want, and click on the create button. Then after that, basically, um, you would be presented the code and you can share this code with other people. Um, specifically your dormies, and then you could go to connect now, you could paste the code right here, and then connect to the system. Well, this is still a prototype, that's why I think there would be an error for that, but that would actually just um, redirect you to the system. Wait, again, there's an error, but th that would actually just, um, move you to the system, for example, this one and this one. And then you could edit it as well, you know, to create your system. That's basically, um, yeah. Okay, so so it's basically tracking your payments. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, and how does it connect to your dorm mates if it's tracking your personal payments? How how does it connect to my dorm mates? So I think I, I was I would be working on the code that like I showed earlier, the code that was presented after creating the payment. Then the host or the one who created the server, the system could share it with dorm mates, and then they could connect to that, and then everyone else would be able to pay in that. All right. Or schedule link in that. Thank you. Uh uh, I think um, Mitch earlier was uh, bringing up a point that um, it might your one of your target customers might be the landlords rather than the dormies. Uh, maybe we could you could explore that a bit further. Yes. Um, do I need to ask? Ah, uh, do I need to answer that question? Andy, no man. Just a okay, but thank suggestion. you. <laughs> I sorry, hindi daw, no daw. 
Ay, joke lang. No need to answer now. <laughs> Thanks. All right. All right. So, um, moving on to the wait. Is it the second to the last? Yeah, I think so. This this would be our second to the last presentation. It will be by Jether, uh, with the app Where to. Is that right, Jether? You here? Hello. Good evening. Yes. Uh, I'm right. gonna share my now. Oh wait. There. Can you can you see it? Yep. Oh wait. Uh, let me go back to the first slide. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm using my mobile phone because there's a. Uh, power inter interruption in, in our area, so. Okay. So I will scroll to the first slide. Um, a brief information about uh, the app that I built is called Where To. So basically, this is a listing app for small businesses, exclusively for small businesses. So it's not for the top companies, uh, not for the big companies. This is only for small to medium. Um, enterprises so yeah so next slide I'm um, sorry so the problem statement would be for the small businesses because of the lack of visibility without a strong online presence in today's age businesses will miss out on opportunities to attract new customers and small businesses struggle to establish a digital presence especially here in our, in our city, um, they only advertise their business on Facebook, Instagram, and also the, the awareness, the, they're not aware about digital presence and most of the businesses here in our local area doesn't know how to uh, take advantage of technology uh, in terms of advertising and marketing. Next slide. And the solution we I am offering uh, using the Where To app is to help small and new businesses establish a digital presence and reach more customers. Businesses can create a profile in their list of services, products, and contact information on the app. Um, Where To offers a unique feature that suggests new restaurant and cuisines based on users' preference and location, making it to, for users to decide where to eat. And by providing a platform for local businesses and customers to connect, where to aims to um, promote community engagement and economic growth. Um, so um, the app is similar to Google Maps. Uh, we can find interesting information about businesses in Google Maps, but there's a slight different, uh, where to is slight different from Google Maps because it provides a platform for small new small and new businesses to establish a digital presence and reach more customers, while Google Maps primarily focuses on providing directions and locations information. Um, because I noticed that if you search on Google Maps, uh, they only, they, they recommend you the top companies first, like if you want to eat chicken, uh, they will recommend Jollibee or McDonald's first before the other businesses. Uh, uh, same goes with the Google search uh, because uh, those companies are paying for advertisements on Google. So that's the, that's the main difference here in where to app. If you search on where to app, you will only see uh, small businesses and small businesses, yes. 
and also another feature is that I'm willing to add is to book an appointment that will re redirect to a Calendly link, special features for, for example, you are a financial advisor or a doctor. So where to app can connect you to Calendly and book an appointment for the users to do. And yeah, on the demo, I only put the images here. So this is the home page. And this is the sign sign up. Uh, yeah, the sign up page. You can opt to use your Google account for this. And also you can register. And this is the uh, automation I made uh, use, using the uh, Airtable. Uh, whenever someone is, re is registering to the app, it will notify the admin. It will generate an email. So this is the sign in future. And this is the search page. You can search local business. You can sort it by category. So you can search it by location on the search bar. And for example, this, I, I click the um, finance category. So it will show like example, Jet Balseya, that's me. And the picture is not me. And he is a financial advisor. And if you open that, there will be an option to call and also a book an appointment. And if you press the call, it will automatically dial it to your phone. And if you click the uh, Calendly, this will appear and you can book an appointment anytime. And it will email the user also. And if you want to register your business, you just fill up this form. And the automation looks like this. If a user registers his or her business, Airtable will notify the admin. It will send an email to, and to the admin. Okay. So the second feature is to claim business because uh, there are times that your business is already listed in the app, so you will have to claim it. So you just select claim and put your email there and you can see for example mercury drug is being claimed so you the air table automation will trigger and and send an email to the admin so this is the dashboard for the admin so it's only a, a gmail account it's an inbox uh, there there's the automation for visualization and and if you go to your profile, user profile, you will see the business that you, you, you currently own. You can see the dashboard there. And another feature is uh, let, let us help you decide. So it will sort the food businesses here by cuisine. So if you want to eat something Filipino, uh, the app will suggest Filipino restaurants for you. And if you want to, for example, Vietnamese Thailand, and it will suggest a Vietnamese cuisine restaurant for you. And there, if you open it, you can call, call the restaurant or open in Google Maps. So it will redirect to the exact location on the Google Maps of the restaurant. And another feature I added uh, a while ago is um, it's, it's integrated in chat. So it's, it's only for fun. And example, what recipe do you want to learn? You will just input your email and, and what food do you want to, to, to search of the recipe? And after clicking, you will redirect it to another page and it will show the, the chat GPT response and instructing you on how to make, in this case, ice Americano. So it's just a few instructions, but I think it helps. And this is the automation I made on Make. So from webhook to open AI and, and create the record in the air table. And that's all, thank you. All right. So uh, judges, uh, the floor is now yours for any questions. Um, hi, Jet, sir. Hello, uh, good evening. Thanks for the presentation. So, obviously, there's a 
the definite need for um online presence for businesses right so yes in, this, in your in the case of your product you have two markets two types of markets that you want to tap there's the business side and the consumers how do you plan to bring both of those types of uh, markets into your app um for the business side uh, i will of course i it's the i'm sorry the the aim of the app is to to list the business for the users to see and also there's an option to ease to to have the users easily navigate the business by using the google app link on their their business and of course and for the users for for them to also suggest some suggest new restaurant in the local area and yeah i think that's about it to okay. basically uh to introduce to introduce the local businesses to local user, users also so what will be the motivation for the users to do that that auction that you mentioned um the motivation is to to find some new interesting businesses to 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 motivate them to support local business so that's the the main motivation for the users and also to to see reviews uh, but i haven't really added that feature yet on the app um there's a but i already put a like and unlike uh feature on only on air table i i haven't really integrated it on the app itself so users can see what's what's hot and what's not you know, something like that okay um, right uh, just to i guess sh- comment on how you're answering is is um you're trying to focus on the solution and trying to well ask you about how you will market the actual product right because um if there are no businesses on the app the consumers will not go into the app if there are no no consumers in the app the businesses won't go into it right so how will you bring those two into actually how will you bring it to the market um okay so my plan is to introduce it to the market is through google search and of course building okay. some SEO optimization on and the web. And the most most great sales real estate. I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna go to settings. Okay, sorry, I'm Jeff. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. So yeah, my my plan is to I will list. I will grab some small businesses here in our area. So I will list it. List it. um and do some seo optimization on each business and once and it will appear in google search eventually so that's that's my i'm sorry that's my plan on how users can see the app okay. by you. google search thank you Right. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I I could go next. So, so Jether, thank you for sharing. So I I would dovetail this uh, statement you have made earlier. Um. So the target is SMEs or let's say MSM SM MSMEs. No. Uh. Any young incentive statements no, for them to onboard your app? Because let's say Facebook. as the main social media app right now uh what would differentiate it i say i don't have any budget if i am msmb i would rather use social media i say that that's where the market is everyone has social media why would they switch to an app who might have let's say 150 restaurants within my area and msmb the hat so what's the incentive statement um I think um I will add more more features uh in this app like for example 
they can uh, users can can order uh, using this app. Uh, it, so it's like Grab or Food Panda, like of of ordering. Uh, but I haven't added it yet to the app because I don't have any customers yet. Uh, so instead of using Grab or Food Panda, they will use the Where to app. And no, and I think for starters, uh, there will be no uh, extra fees for that uh, because I'm still building the app. So I think that's the uh, main motivation also for the businesses to list their app here and Where to because it's it doesn't require you to uh to cut commissions uh for their for their sales and also introduce them to digital marketing and help them grow their business also their social media and that's where i i make money in this business i'm in digital marketing consultancy so maybe in the near future so that's that's where my next question is leading to. Um, <laughs> you, you mentioned that there's lack of online presence, even though there's social media available, no. So did you run some studies, surveys, even checking, no? Uh, on my page, but on certain restaurant, that if there are lights, uh, in the certain restaurant. Um. Yes. Um. Most of uh restaurants here in my local business has a Facebook page, but they don't really know how to to optimize it and take advantage of it of social media to grow their business. They're just they're just making a Facebook account and Instagram account, and they do nothing there. And they're like just posting some. They're posting their menus, but I think it's not really effective. And I think that business can do more uh, with 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 my help to introduce them to digital marketing and optimization. I think that's a really good boost for their business compared to not using any digital marketing strategies at all. I say there's a lot of aggregators already. Um, you could buy a dime a dozen, basically. But what I think the market is at, if you're targeting MSMEs, would be how could you boost them? Not doing kind of a statement, my name. Um, if this app could help boost uh, awareness, or if it could help boost um, accessibility, let's say I'm in this specific area and three miles away, this restaurant is there, and this offers what I'm craving for right now. So, parang ganong mga statement. So, you target. Uh, outside of an overpopulated na kasi so brand of aggregators no uh, if you could focus on a, a certain direction na I'm gonna help MSMEs with ganitong statement I think that would help them as an incentive statement also so I give you okay well. thank you All right, so I think we're going to uh, move on to the next one. Aga, are you there? Uh, can you present now? Hello. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yep. Okay. Yes, uh, I'll start my presentation now. Okay. Okay. Just um, share screen. Okay. Uh, are you seeing my screen? Sorry. Sorry. Hello. Yep. Okay. So uh, my app is called uh, What to Eat. So discover the most uh, loved food items at uh, every store with ease. So the problem that I'm I'm trying to solve is uh, mostly on the consumer side or the uh, customer side which is they have difficulty in finding the most popular food items at every store. And there's a time-consuming process of 
searching for new and exciting food items. And um, while they are in the store, uh, they are being decided on what to order at a specific restaurant. So this is for the side of the consumer. In progress. So this is for this is foodies. For foodies. So uh, the benefit for them is they have to, or they will save time and money finding the best deals and avoiding less popular items and make informed purchasing decisions with user ratings. Since my app is a, uh, like a ranking app for every uh, food items at each store. So what what does this what does it benefit for businesses? Uh, it will increase the visibility of popular food items at their store and enhance customer experience with personalized recommendation for this is for a user. And they can work on how they can improve with items that are not that popular for their um, for their menu. So this is the screenshot of the app that I've created. Uh, I'm sorry for the design because I'm not really good with the design. So they can filter the stores or the category for the stores that are available. And then could be bakery, bar, fast food. And then we, when they click a specific item, they will be routed to the uh, food ranking app for each of the menu items that are available on that specific store. And the users, uh, they can be logged in or not. They can choose to upvote what items that they like most or what they usually order. And this will help other users or other website visitors to uh, see what are the most popular items for that specific store. And um, this model, when the add menu item is clicked, users can submit menu item that can be added on the store. Maybe there's a new food, available on that specific store they can add the name and the image and they can click the add button to add it and this is for the admin the admin can add the new store add their logo and then the category um, if they want to list a specific new store to the application so uh, that's my simple presentation for the app but um, as far as I know, uh, I'll be doing some um, more added features on the app, like uh, I'll add comments and ratings on each store. And then uh, I'll try to add a favorites button on each store so that if the users are logged in and they can view a specific store, they can add it to favorites. So there will be no they will be notified if there are some changes, like there's a new food item added on that specific store. And if there's a new a ranking on the app or on the food items on the app. So the food ranking app solves many common problems that food lovers face and also provides numerous benefits for businesses. And there's a meme I don't always use for dragging apps, but when I do, I use what to eat. That's all. Thank you. All right. Nice. Thanks, Aga. So I'll be handing this over to the judges again for their questions. Hey, Aga. I'm just curious. Are you a no, software engineer? Um, no, <laughs> I'm a, I'm actually a developer, like a front end okay. web developer. Okay. Um, so I, I guess I know you just, just commenting about the application. Um, I, I like that you thought about it, um, holistically, like, uh, you from the customer side and also the administrator side, 
Um, that's not something I saw in the other applications. Honestly, it, it wasn't really required, but I like that you went the extra mile of doing this. Um, it shows that you have a, a good handle on how to build software talaga. Yes, you know, side comment lang. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I have a question, Aga. Um, so, so first of all, solid. This, this is in my top three. So, congratulations. Personally, uh, this is in my top three. Um, Thank you, Paul. So, does this take into account um, previous orders? Let's say I ordered X menu for like the last two or three sessions. Tapos yung next recommendation aligns to yung, yung type of orders that, that took place in the last two weeks. Mga ganun. May, may ganun ka ba algorithm na na-consider? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was planning to add it as a feature as well. So they can add, or the users can add it as a comment. So these are the these are the previous items that they already ordered. But I'm not sure how, how to implement it yet. Mm -hmm. So, ano, maganda siya. If, if, if you would be implementing that, kasi undecided ka nga, no? Pero... If you could base it on history, uh, if I ordered like chicken for the last three weeks, most likely chicken then you order for the fourth week. Mm, yes. But yeah. if it could uh, recommend me, let's say, a new chicken place 10 miles, uh, well, not 10 miles, uh, three miles away from my place that offers, let's say, a different flavor, it might boost uh, that unknown restaurant also. So it would also help young, young restaurants that are partnered with you. So, mm -hmm. Tapos, ayun pa, I, I love that it's based on informed decisions, based on user ratings. Pero yung user ratings mo saan galing? Sa app lang ba? Like, built-in ba sa app to? Or does it consider, let's say, social media? Mga post sa watcher ulam pa rin, mga ganun. Or does mm -hmm. it uh, consider yung mga food aggregators ng mga ratings and then combine everything to, to provide recommendations? Actually, sir, that's a very good idea. Um, but as of now, the current version of the app is only based on um, upvotes or user upvotes. Mm -hmm. Since I'm not, I'm not, or I don't know the feature on how to add APIs or API calls to, uh, to other food aggregators in order for me to add it on the app. But it's a good thing to up, uh, to add po. Maganda siya if you have access to social media. Yun yun, kasi yun talaga free for all. Eh. So you have unbiased views. And it might help with the recommendations also. Um, mm, yes, well. but, but, but this is very promising. So again, congratulations. Thank you, Paul. All right, so we're down to our uh, last presenter, Andre. Thank you for... Uh, your patience, and I hope you still have uh, your energy to <laughs> deliver a presentation. But okay, yeah. po, sir. nice. So yeah, take it away, Andre. All right. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. And I am now presenting Peace of Body. Oh, what happened? Can you po my screen? Ko na... Nope. It's black. Now, need ko na ng bagong PC. Yeah, yeah, na, yeah, we can see it now. Ayun. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. I am Andre Vedad, and I'm I'm going to be presenting Peace of Body. Uh, Nag-change po ba sa inyo yung screen? Ba sa akin po, eh, parang pa iba-iba. Uh, hindi. Uh, black screen, black screen po sa akin eh. Teka lang po. Yung, yung PowerPoint po mismo, ikita namin. Yun nga din po eh. Okay lang. Kims lang yun. Ayan po. Uh, ayaw pa din. Uh, wait. Could you send yung file sa amin? Hey, uh, Crystal, do we have like the files ba somewhere? 
No, sorry. Oh, okay. Ah, wait lang. Kwento mo na lang. Kwento mo na lang. <laughs> uh, what if ganito na lang po kaya? Mm-hmm. Mukhang nagkaka-technical difficulties po tayo. Uh, yeah, if you can uh, if you can just ano, yun nga, kwento mo lang tapos if, if you have the prototype na lang later or if you you can show the prototype instead of yung presentation. Yan, What if gato na lang po? Uh, yung, hindi ko na lang po ipapa full screen yung PDF. Gato na lang po. Ah, yan. Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ayos ng ating presentation ngayon, guys. All right. Uh, I'm Andre Vedat. <laughs> I am a mental health and financial literacy advocate. Uh, I am an IT graduate from Atenson University, law student at Arellano University, freelance writer, blogger, gamer, and certified weeb. Uh, there's also uh, another uh, another thing about me. Eh, wala ko na change na yung aking screen. Hindi pa. Nako. Are you sa third slide ka na ba? We're still yes, seeing po. the second slide. Nasa third slide na po ako. What? If you could share to us yung slide mo, we could share our screens on your behalf if you like. Uh, ah, sige po, pwede din po yun. It's <laughs> in Bukang kabahan, hindi, hindi ka ano, dito. Oh, I think you can send it over sa Zoom. <laughs> That's fine. Bakit pag ako ay ginigisa ng mga prop ko sa Arelia, ano, okay lang akin Zoom, pero dito hindi. Recording in progress. Uh, 3.5 MB po. Uh, uh, uploading pa lang po. Uh, nasend mo na ba? Uh, sending pa lang po. Uh, 50%? Uh, oh. Sige. Well then, I'm just gonna, uh, gonna tell a story habang naghihintay po ang ating ano pag-upload. Pero uploading na po. Itutuloy ko na po yung pagpapresent. Uh, sayang lang, hindi nyo ito makikita sa mismong screen, pero uh, bala na. I am also a meme expert. <laughs> okay, the problem that I'm facing in, uh, I'm trying to resolve in my project is is this. Uh, Miss J. Ledesma from the Philippine News Agency posted uh, back in March 8, 2021 titled, What Keeps Filipinos from Preparing for the Future? This is, of course, about uh, them trying to save uh, money, uh, yeah, money, uh, like budgeting and also for their emergency funds. Well, of course, we are aware that in 2021, it was uh, the time of the pandemic, so there's no surprise there. But she pointed out uh, five points in her article. Those are having trouble saving, not enough money left to save, lacks awareness on how to do it, the bal na na attitude, and of course the YOLO mentality. Now the solution that I'm trying uh, that I present uh, using my project is. For people to have the means to track their budget. And Peace of Body helps users in tracking their budget. It can be accessed from anywhere. The web app uh, removes the need to install the app before using it. Of course, as long as they have the internet and also a web browser. My target audiences are people that want to track their expenses and prove their financial literacy. And of course, it is easy to use. It has a simple design that aids the user in tracking their budget. The overview of my uh, project. It is user. It has a user-friendly interface with a simple design. It's easy to use and it is straightforward. Income and expense tracking. 
Users can enter it in their income and expenses and track them over time. Budget of review. Users are presented with an overview with their total income and expenses. The benefits in using this uh, web app. They can improve their, finan their financial management, have a better decision making, and of course, increase their savings. And the summary of, the, of my project is Pizza Buddy is a budget management uh, tool that tracks users' income and expenses, allowing them to make an informed financial decision. It has a user-friendly interface design, making it a, available, a valuable asset for anyone looking to take control of their finances and make informed financial decisions. And uh, na upload na ba sa yung file? Yes, na upload na. If you check on the slides, uh, ipapakita lang po yung mga the parts of the project, the program. Uh, I mean the web app. First is the uh, home screen when they are logged out. Next is when they are logged in. And as you can see, the there's there are only a minor minor differences. Like of course, uh, they remove the button, and then uh, when you scroll down, you can see the quick overview. And then next, you will see the budget tracker itself, where they can see what uh, transactions they have recorded. And of course, if you click on the next one, but in the app itself, when you scroll down, you will see the input your transaction uh, uh, option where they where the user can input their transactions and it will uh, the data will be sent to air uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry air table where when you look above that record will be put on the table and then on the next slide it is the about page it uh, yeah it's just about an about page and the next slide is the privacy policy and the next one is the contact us and the next one is the user profile where they can just change their information and add a profile feature for uh personalization uh, custom customization for um uh, about uh, for for their own use yeah actually and of course on the next one is the planned monet monetization option it is just being powered by the community. Anyone can scan the QR code and they can just donate. It will remove the need for advertisements because we hate those advertisements like, right? Always uh, on uh, on top of our screen being a distraction. And then, yeah, that's all there is to it. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Right, yeah. Yep. Uh, nice presentation. Um, honestly, that's something I need. Um, one thing though that I would really appreciate, Tana, is if you had an OCR. Um, I haven't explored softer enough to to see the extension. So, but one of the things I really hate when when uh, doing expense tracking is I hate typing out everything. <laughs> so, if I could just take a picture. Uh, to be and fair, ma'am, uh, I haven't really, I haven't really explored software as well uh, that much. But uh -huh. if I can see the, if I found the option to just take a picture of the, on mm -hmm. of the item itself, then I will just put it right there. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, if you could have that and uh, maybe connect it with AI later on, that would be a, a real game changer, Sana. And it extends not just to personal financing, it also extends to business. So for example, I have a lot of account managers under me that need to report the reimbursement um, so that, you know, report the reimbursement. <laughs> um, and it takes them forever to send their, their receipts to your Excel nila because they hate filling out everything. They hate looking at the date, et cetera. 
So if you could have that OCR component and if you could also have an AI component where um, it automatically um, understands, I guess, what category this is, if this is a food expense, if this is a hotel expense, etc. Um, that would be, that would save a lot of time and that it would be something I would buy. That's all. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, about that, uh, the use of AI. Actually, I am quite fascinated with the evol uh, evolution of AI, and I really wanted to implement it on the app. It's, it's just that uh, I'm not really familiar with the machine learning and the AI got, uh, mm -hmm. part on the industry. So, But if ever I ever delve in that uh, field and, and learn how to implement it, then yeah, I would like to put it on the app. Okay. Um, there was a tutorial in the softer uh, YouTube channel, no, that uh, makes it really easy for you to integrate ChatGPT with your data set. So maybe you could play with that um, uh, quickly. Like, super simple. Na. I did it in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Andre, uh, congrats again. Uh, I, I, think, I feel that this is going to be helpful for a lot of Filipinos. So question though, um, if I were to do this in Excel, how does this differ in doing this in web app? Uh, first of all, uh, if ever you will be using an Excel, mm -hmm. and you're not using, a, for example, OneNote, uh, I mean OneDrive, then people won't be able to v use it uh, that much like on different uh, devices. And most of all, uh, most Filipinos aren't really uh, tech savvy in a sense, like they're not really computer re literate. So if they're gonna do that, then it would be like a little bit of a hassle, but I would also like to put an option on the app like, uh, uploading a CSV file, then it will go to the app itself and on the table on Air, uh, Airtable. Then also uh, target market. Um, I'm not sure if, if it was covered as I read through your slides. Then. Oh, so I, I, I put the target uh, audience, sir. Target audience. Yes, Next, sir. Uh, on the third slide. I don't really put. Uh, 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 niche in a sense like okay. financial literacy it covers a, a, a lot of demographics like it, it is not about uh, like only for students only for mm -hmm. uh, Gen Z and mm -hmm. boomers everyone is uh, everyone has a right to uh, learn about financial literacy and also to improve their financial literacy that's why I'm an advocate for financial literacy then also I'm curious, no. So let's say I'm tracking my my costs or my budget. Pero is it stopping me, or is it incentivizing me to really manage my budget, or is just me tracking it in a web app? Well, it really, it is about the discipline of oneself, really. Yes. Um, so yun. So so that's that's the the good question. No? Yeah. Does it reinforce a discipline as a user, or is it just merely a tool? Uh, it is merely a tool, really. Like mm -hmm. a lot of apps are out there, like to help them on budget tracking mm -hmm. uh, and financial management and all that. But uh, the one thing is, if they don't, if one, if they themselves, the user themselves, didn't have the discipline to to manage their finances, then the tools itself is useless <clears throat> without their uh, di discipline. Yeah, are you exploring it, let's say, in the near future? Uh, say, for example, if I did uh, a target, let's say, I would like to save 1,000 pesos every month. If I hit it, I would get like incentives, let's say, a coin specific app. Uh, and then I could use it as something to buy features in the app to... Uh, maybe improve the app in a customizable, so, so gamify your app, so to speak. So that that helps also 
um, with the users, no, uh, in 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 reinforcing the need to to save versus us just tracking it. I could do it in whiteboard. I could do it in a piece of paper. I could do it in Excel. But what makes yours stand out? Yun yung yun yung focus mo uh, for that app. Yeah, uh, if you see uh, if you see the uh, user profile uh, page, you can mm -hmm. see that only the Profile picture itself that is customizable for now, mm -hmm. but if I ever I improve it, then yeah, I would like to implement uh like gamify it yes. to add levels and incentives like I don't know uh let, let's say coupon codes for Shopee Lazada, but for buying something within the app, I'm not really yeah, it's a stretch mm -hmm. it's a stretch oh, uh, yeah. you're there to say. It would attack the problem statement that you have the bahala na attitude. Yes. Na I, I could like write it down, pero sure, I, I could like update it again. Pero if I'm incentivized and I'm empowered to really save beyond me just writing it down, it would help definitely a lot of Filipinos. Kahit, di ba meron yung barya challenge no, that we yes, saw sa, sa news na iniipon nila sa pinto, iniipon nila sa mga garapon. And that incentivizes them because they could see it uh, it's it's growing. It's growing. It's growing uh -oh. with them. So so something to that effect. So reward system that's very evident again. So I think that will help. In them. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will try to implement that when I am uh, improving the app. Hi, Andre. Can you show us or can you demo again? Like how. Show us an example of you tracking it within your app. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, okay, sir. Uh, I will try to share my screen again using the uh, browser. Hopefully, <laughs> it is all right now. Can you, can you guys see it? Oh, no. Uh, maybe you can try to turn off your video. That was. We share ka ng screen. Okay, sir. Um, Andre, siguro instead of PowerPoint, maybe you can go straight to software app if PowerPoint yung problem. Uh, no, ma'am. Um, I am sharing my browser na po mismo. Pero mukha nakaka-problema din po. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> Nakaya yung problema nito. Oh, wait, uh, is the software ba, ano, publicly Yes, sir. Uh, when you, uh, yes, yeah, sir. could you send the, you send the link? You send the link. Ito ba? Right, thank you. Yeah, if I can share my screen. Right. All right, uh, right. It is really a simple design uh, like that. Uh, if you just sign in, well, you can also sign in using. Uh, oh yeah, you can just create uh, your own uh, uh, account para po ma medyo maano po. Yan, medyo simple lang po na naman po siya. Uh, while wala pa po kayong mga records, uh, blanko lang po yan sila. But if you input uh, a record po sa baba pa po, Ah, okay. And, ah, okay. Ito yung form. Apa. Ah, And, eh, yan po. Uh, pipili lang po kayo kung income or expenses. Tapos, date kung kailan po ninyo ginawa yung transaction po na yun. At end time. It, bakit may time? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And, okay. Oh! Unknown field. Ah, uh, okay. Pukang may issue sa ano sa database siguro to. Ah, wait. Meron po pala akong narabasa kanina sa Airtable. Like, may maintenance daw po sila. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, wait. May maintenance pala Airtable. <laughs> Alright. Actually, like the simplicity of it, uh, Andre. So, you're, I, I would say, you're on the right track. Um, Thank for you, sir. comments, maybe I would just definitely improve the design. Um, yes. Finances or finances is a pretty boring topic if we're being honest. 
So, I, I would say... Like, I, I understand your point, sir. <laughs> Ganon din po ako, lalo na po mga ten, uh, five years ago. <laughs> Ngayon lang po talaga ako nagkaroon ng... Uh, dito, like, an interest sa uh, finances simula nung nagka-work po ako. <laughs> Budget so, is tight. Yeah. So, I would say add a little bit more of the light. Uh, and I think... Um, Brad suggestions with the integrating goals is something that I haven't seen in other, or at least in the tools that I use. It's something that I could, um, that would make this uh, convincing, right, to switch into. All right. That's all. Thanks, Andre. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for, uh, for the input. Uh, I'll all right. Go, uh, learn uh, at that. I'll take it to consideration. All right. So that ends the presentation, but that's not the end of the that's not the end of the event yet. So yeah, we are actually already over time, twenty minutes over time, and we still have to deliver it to the judges. So uh, right, uh, Crystal, uh, well, what are we gonna do? Are we? Um, maybe. Give the judges 10 minutes a breakout room to decide the top three. 10 minutes long. What do you think? 10 minutes. Uh, okay, I'm just going to give you breakout rooms for the judges. Um, Like, sabi ni Radgay na may top three na daw siya. So I guess, like, um, medyo baka mabilis na yung decision. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to throw you guys to a... <laughs> Uh, to a breakout room with Crystal whilst we are going to do some networking and like question and answers here in the main room. Ah, yeah, five minutes with the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go I'm going to move the judges now to their room. All right, uh, Rod, Daryl, Abel, and Pit Nine Pumtadan. While we stay here, so Russell, can I ask a question? Sure. Hi, this is Mitch from Sweden. Andre, I have a question for you, Andre. Um, yes, I sent you a note. I have a children's educational games company here in Sweden, and I wondered how long did it take you to make this application? Uh, if I'm going to be honest, uh, four hours. Four hours, okay. But so for most of the people that are in the, that presented today, um, barring John, because I think in John's case, there's some UI, UX type of situation going on there. But most of you had done the builds with software, which is really great. And Grassil, Crystal, I wrote, Miriam Hawkbian and told her that I was attending this and I sent her a screenshot of what you were doing to just let them know that Lizzie and Tomaso that their investment had worked out really well. I think this is really great, pretty good, I mean, presentation day. I'm just curious, like for most of you that built it, weren't you thinking or did you build this with a UX person in mind or a user? centric design person in mind so that you can understand a little bit more about the design thinking aside from the functional stuff going on. And when you were building this stuff in your team, I, I know some of you just, you know, hacked it through, but or some of you actually have a design background so that the UI UX can be more further along. So that's really my question. When you built it, you're playing around with software, but were there any design thinking guys with you building along well, with you uh, anyway. no i am i am a one man band <laughs> and no, no. about the uh, design aspect to be fair i failed it on i failed my design subject on college <laughs> okay you, so you shouldn't, that's why this, you, shouldn't tell, you shouldn't tell, you shouldn't tell that in public but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> it's fine but thank you for I'm being sorry. I, I'm really, but, but, I'm really just an honest and open guy. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. But Grazel, this is more question for Grazel and Crystal. 
more for the teens. Um, it, it sounds like, you know, there's, there's quite a number of people here that, uh, you know, people like, you know, that have also um, actual programming background, which I think is really amazing, right? So the question I have is that uh, of the ones that presented, are there people in the group here that are actual, you know, heavy duty programmers as well? Um, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so yeah. Those, two, those two questions are quite important for me. Obviously, people like Yan from his background on LinkedIn, it does seem that, you know, Teriel, of course, because she's a judge, and I think all the judges have programming background as well, right? But I'm curious, the ones that have actually presented now, you know, the guy from Dormy, the guy from, you know, are they... Are they also from a software engineering or software development background? Or if in, my case, from a, in my case, I'm from a network management background from network the department uh, from the DIC. But not so none from the heavy duty build background, right? Uh, no. Or no. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Crystal, Greshel, thank you. Great, great job today. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I think you had a question, Ba? Or... But we have questions <laughs> for the t-shirt. Okay. So let's do it. Let's do it rapid fire style. So I'm not gonna present anything. I'm just, you just have to listen to me. What is the question? And you type as fast as you can in the chat box. What is the answer? <laughs> okay. So, okay, so some of the questions here actually involves uh, like the people and like the product. So I, re I request whoever presented like the product I'm pertaining to not to participate on that question. That would be appreciated. <laughs> so, right. So for the first question, I... I don't have to say go. If you have an answer, just like uh, send it through. So, so for the presentations earlier, so I'm going to ask the first name of the person who presented with a tagline, now that's why is. Give me the first name. <laughs> Okay. Okay, we have we have a we have a winner of the shirt. Thank you for for participating, Andrew. Okay, right, so it was Clarence. So I have actually a request, Clarence. Could you repeat that now live? No, that's why is. No? Nice. No, that's why is. Nice. Wait, do you have like a marketing or sales background, Clarence? No. no what? No. I'm All a right. digital engineer by education. Nice. All right, moving on to the next question. So I, I will be asking what product it is. Okay. So which product earlier that caters in finding roommates? Yung mga nanalo na. Okay, we have. Okay, we have Rumi Hub and Dormi. Wait, I'm gonna check the, the name again. Okay. I'm actually pertaining to Rumi Hub. Uh, please, guys, if that's wrong, wait. Uh, what's uh, Floridane? Is that right? That's that's Ruby yes. Hub. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Thank you for validating. So we have our second winner, which is Miguel. Uh, Miguel Guzman. Okay. All right. So last question. So again, this is rapid fire. What tool did you use to create your prototype or product? Dali, dali. Easy. Ayun. <laughs> okay. 
si Russet. Okay. Third winner si Russet. Russet. Ang hirap naman. Sorry. <laughs> Russet. Okay. Alright, and that's the end of the giveaway. Unless we have more Tristad. Meron pa ba tayo? Wala nang budget. <laughs> ah, wala nang <laughs> budget. Uh, uh, we're also, uh, whoever have like spare money, that joke lang. Uh, we're also, <laughs> we're also open for sponsorship for, uh, for sponsorship with the events. And we actually forgot to announce our next event. So the next event will be, what's this? Wait, ah, wait, what? Ano ba lang balak natin doon, Crystal? Wala pa siya sa slide. Um, I'm still looking for a speaker, pero it's either gonna be a talk on how to become a no-code freelancer or no-code and AI together. So, either of those. Right. So, wait. Uh, do we announce the date na ba? Um, di ko pa alam eh, kasi depende pa sa speaker na mahanap ko. Oh, okay, sige. So probably within May or June, early June na, if ever. So, and it would be a Saturday around Metro Manila. Uh, we're still looking at the COVID situation also. So we don't want to uh, compromise uh, everybody's health na. Uh, right, so do you have, so I'm just gonna... Uh, ask everyone to drop in their LinkedIn accounts on the chat and uh, let's connect in LinkedIn. I'm going to do it. Also, LinkedIn account. Right, we also, oh, wait. Oh, nga pala, kailangan pa natin mag-vote ng ano ng crowd favorite. Ah, uh, sige. Can you just chat na lang din yung ano? Yung crowd favorite. Wait, I'm gonna... Pwede pa, ano? <laughs> Pwede pa, reply na lang dun sa thread ng crowd favorite. Uh, crowd favorite na product. Okay, si, si Andre. Idol na si Clarence. Si Clarence. <laughs> okay. Guys, kung sino man manalo dito, sayang walang ano, walang monetary. Hindi <laughs> kami pa, wala kami pa-libre. Ayan na, bumalik na yung judges. Wait lang. Sige guys, pwede pa kayong mag, ano, mag-send ng tawag dun ng mga votes nyo na crowd favorite and your LinkedIn accounts. So would you consider the votes uh, outside of the judges also? Ano yan? Sorry. Ikaw consider mo rin itong mga votes. Hindi, ano yan? Uh, crowd favorite. Yeah, pero would this be considered also para at least... Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yep, yep. Sorry. Market fit na <laughs> May price din ba yun? Yung crowd favorite. Yun again. Okay. Okay. Oh, grab food voucher daw. Yan. Game, 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 game. Wait, wala, wait, wala pa. Wait, sige. I-input muna ni, ano, ni Crystal. <laughs> yung winners. Okay, wait. Pwede na. Pwede, na, pwede ko na bang i-announce yung crowd favorite, Crystal? 
Mukhang ano naman eh. Bibilangin ko ah. One, two, three. Okay, sige. Mukhang winner natin si ano, si Clarence. Woo, congrats Clarence. Ipo-post namin yung ano. Ipo-post ba natin to, Crystal? Oh, di ba after? Oh, uh, with like uh, ano, 10k crab, grab voucher. De joke lang. Sagot mo gra. Sa mga types na programming. Uh, grab. Now that's why is daw. Wait lang. Ito na. Uh, just a few seconds, guys. Inedit lang namin yung slides. Okay na, Crystal. Okay. Okay na. Nice. Wait. Wait lang. Hindi na ako marunong mag-ano. Ayan. Ayan. So, uh, the winners, we will have three. The th- uh, third, second, and first place. So, uh, before we announce the winners, we would like to thank everyone for staying up this late. Uh, probably, iba sa inyo hindi pa kumain, including me. <laughs> so, uh, ayun, thank you for uh, your patience and also your effort. Uh, I know this was a week-long uh, activity. So again, uh, this would be uh, not the last time we're gonna have a uh, challenge, or I I'm I like to call it a like a long form hackathon. So probably we would try to uh, get something similar, an- another one within the year, ideally. But uh, yeah, please uh, follow our social media no code ph. We have Twitter, Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook. We actually also have a website. So hanapin nyo lang no, no dash code PH. So ayun. Alright, so let's get into the winners. And by the way, ano kasi yung uh, we, uh, premium ng, ano, ng third prize? Where's style? Swag kit. Softer swag kit. Ayun, swag kit plus bragging rights. Okay. So, ayun. So, our third place for uh, this uh, softer challenge with no code is okay. Peace of Body by Andre. Woo! Wait. Ang hirap. Ang hirap ay... An, wala, bang, ano, wala bang sound effects na palakpak? <laughs> Sorry. Wala. Uh, yeah. Kailangan ko ng soundboard for that. Okay. Next time. Alright. So, Andre. Uh, congrats, Andre. Uh, probably a few words. From you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, uh, to be fair, uh, to be fair, I, I'm, tr- I'm trying to aim for the third place because I want the squ- I, I want the bragging rights. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> thank That's you so great. much. <laughs> All right. So okay. Uh, Moving on to the second place, which the prize is... Ano kasi yun ulit? Crystal, sorry. 50% of six months of subscription. Yeah. How much is softer? Anyway, that's 50% off for a six-month uh, six month subscription. Yeah, that's plenty to uh, get off the ground in your product. So next one would be second place... So warehouse PH by John. Oh, congrats, John. Ayun, meron. May soundboard si Anton. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So ayun, John. Uh, any few words? Wait, nandito pa ba si John? Ayun, ayun din siya. Ayun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marami salamat. Uh, congrats to also the finalists. Uh, thank you. We put a lot of work, so congrats to everyone. Okay, guys, wag nyo kaming kakalimutan. Uh, willing to, ano, willing to work for 
a fee, hindi free. <laughs> if ever you want to, ano, you want to uh, pursue. But all right, so the next one. So our winner for uh, this week's challenge is why is grocer? So then, yeah. Okay, but just to be clear, uh, ano, ang tawag dun, it's not just about yung, ano, yung tagline ish, pero <laughs> ayun. So, any any words from Clarence? Yeah, I would just like to thank no code PH, the entire team, the judges. Uh, I really learned a lot from this. Uh, it's my first time doing a note. But it's that pro VBA lang ako. I work with, with Excel a lot. So it's really my first time hopping onto something different. And yun, uh, si Mang Crystal in particular <laughs> helping me with the codes. Guys, <laughs> medyo late. Yun. So um, again, uh, thank you so much to everyone. Congratulations then. Uh, I mean, just getting something out there in just a span of a few days is really already an accomplishment. So congratulations, everyone. Nice. Okay. Uh, again, God. congrats, Clarence. Nakadalawang ano ka. Yung, ano kasi yung price nito, Crystal? Bragging rights lang, di ba? Yung first place. Oo, bragging rights lang. <laughs> bibigyan, ka, bibigyan ka lang yung t-shirt na I, I, I was the winner of this. <laughs> Pero I believe it's a one-year premium, ano, premium subscription. account. Subscription. Okay, softer. Yun. Pag mo kakalimutan pag umasenso ka na Clarence. Ayun. So again, also I would like to uh, before we end, I would like to thank all three judges, Abel, Teril, and Rad for uh, giving in the effort for listening and uh, judging uh, yung mga naging ano natin, mga naging participants natin. Uh, probably a few words also from the judges. Uh. Right. Thanks for having us also. And congrats to everyone for putting a product out. Definitely. This is not easy by any stretch. Right? So yeah, congrats. And I hope we hope to continue. We hope you guys continue your well, I hope you guys continue your products and see them in the market. Even. So yeah, ako din, short lang. Um, so in the startup world, um, execution is everything. Uh, execution eats strategy for for breakfast. So kung alam mong plan nyo, pag di kayo mga execute, um, it's not gonna look good. Um, and solutions like software, low code solutions, no code solutions, help you get there um, fast and reliably. So don't discount the power of these tools. Um. The faster you can get your product out there, the faster you can test, and the faster you can iterate, um, the more success it, it will bring to you. All right, thank you, Teril. Red? Uh, congratulations, everyone. Um, so I, I messaged Russell. Uh, again, congratulations, and I hope to talk to you all soon. All right. So, and before we end, Crystal, uh, any closing words, remarks? Wala. Ay, meron. Ayun. So, again, thank you all for attending and uh, giving effort to this challenge. This will not be the last one. Uh, hopefully, we're going to see you uh, this May or probably in June uh, on a face to face event. And if uh, we're going to also put up another challenge, like with like after a few months. Uh, hopefully, you're going to follow our social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, website, and pa ba? Pa ba ibang social media. I think that's all. So again, thank you all for uh, attending this. And I hope you have a good evening. Again, congratulations sa winners. Huwag na kaming kalimutan pag mayaman na kayo. Again, thank you and goodbye everyone. Hi. Bye everyone, congratulations. Bye. Bye. Congrats.